reading through the Revelation, chapter 2 of the book of Revelation. We are at verse 12, the message to the church in Pergamum. Now, in Pergamum, the city, there were dozens of temples to pagan gods. They had, we would say, a church on every street, a temple on every corner. And the emperor worship, just like many places in the Roman Empire, was a part of that worship. Uh, the emperor Domitian, who reigned at the time this was written, was wanting to be called Lord and God and to be worshipped in their town, in his temple. Uh, there was also another um, god, the god of healing in Pergamum. In this day, the god of healing was symbolized by a snake. As a matter of fact, the schools of learning for healing still use this symbol today. You'll find a pole with the snake on it. Some people have said that uh, it means the snake of the Old Testament when they raised the snake on a pole and people were healed. And that could be true. But here we have this God of healing that was symbolized by a serpent as well. Pergamum was also a capital city, so an important place of trade and of worship. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Pergamum. This is the message from the one with a sharp two-edged sword. Now, the word of God is pictured as a two-edged sword in the writing of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Word of God always gets to the intents and the motives of the heart. It goes past all our hypocrisy. It goes past all the pretenses and goes right to the heart of the issue. And so he says in verse 13, I know. I know that you live in the city where Satan has his throne. Could mean the temple of Zeus. Or it could mean they had so many pagan gods and temples there that the whole city was a temple of pagan gods. But whatever he means here, he means that we ought to worship the one true God. Yet you have remained loyal to me. You have not compromised your values. You have not compromised your loyalty. You refused to deny me, even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred among you there in Satan's city. Antipas was martyred there for his faith. It could have been as a warning to others, other Christians, that, listen, if you keep uh, your total allegiance to Christ and don't honor these other gods, your fate will be the same as Antipas. It could have been a warning to the other Christians. But either way, he became a witness and a martyr. Now, actually, in the New Testament, witness and martyr actually are the same kind of word. Because in the early days of Christianity, if you were a witness, there was a real possibility that you would be martyred for your faith. And so it was with Antipas. So it seems like there were enemies on the outside of the church who wanted to destroy the Christian faith, or at least compromise their Christian faith. In verse 14, But I have a few complaints against you. You tolerate some among you whose teaching is like that of Balaam. And you have to go clear back in the Old Testament to see what this is speaking about. But Balaam wanted to compromise the people of God so that they would be not blessed but cursed of God and that the enemies could overrun the people of Israel. So the whole idea of Balaam is the idea of compromising your faith. Balaam showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel through compromise. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols and by committing sexual sin. In a familiar way, you have some Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. So whoever these Nicolaitans were, they were saying, let's compromise with the Roman uh, worship and do some things to please them so that we don't have to suffer so much for our faith. 
So these Nicolaitans really spoke of compromise. These Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. So what does Jesus say to them? Verse 16, repent of your sin, turn around, or I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Truth will not tolerate hypocrisy, compromise, or falseness in our spiritual journey. Verse 17, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Notice each one of these letters closes with this same kind of phrase. Listen to what the Spirit says to the churches, plural, churches. Not just to the church, but the churches. Because there are lessons in here for churches of all ages, of all times. And so here we find this admonition, this a word of warning. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to this church as well as to the other churches about what it means to walk this spiritual walk in a world that is often antagonistic to Jesus and to God. Listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna. Manna was again another Old Testament reference that has been hidden away in heaven. And I will give to each one a white stone, and on that stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. And the white stone was often a mark of membership, of acceptance in the group. And so he's saying, if you hang tough in the midst of persecution and trials and hard times and remain loyal to me, listen, you'll be accepted in the end. You will find acceptance because of your faith in what I have done for you on the cross and in your life. And so we find this letter, this message to the church that is in the city of Pergamum. Here, a city that finds a church within it that has Christians that want to compromise to ease their suffering. But with the warning, it says, don't do it. Don't do it. Hang tough in the midst of suffering, and you will find yourself victorious. Thank you for listening today. God bless you. God keep you.